All right, welcome to Real to Real Outdoors. This is Captain Adam. We got a great topic for you today, but before we meet the captains, a uh, big shout out to Captain Chucks for all their support and also the Wolf's Den in Scottville, Michigan uh, for this beautiful table and chairs that we're using for uh, this episode. But before we get started here, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll be reminded every time that we uh, produce more videos and you won't miss a thing. So let's meet those captains. Hi, I'm Captain Craig Coleman from Ludington, Michigan. Hi, Captain Dave Yeager here from Ludington, Michigan. All right, so I got Craig and Dave here with me and uh, all uh, two, two really great fishermen, very well-rounded fishermen, I would say, on, and all things. Uh, we had some people ask us to talk about brown fishing and brown fishing is kind of one of those things that not a lot of people talk about. Um, but it is a, it, it's a really good way to get out on the water um, before, the, you know, for us up north, we don't really get salmon until later, um, usually in May, sometimes late April. This year, possibly, you know, late March, if the water temperatures continue to, to climb. But um, let's just kind of talk about the basics. Um, you know, what, what, what are your basic setups? How are you setting things up? And, and then what are your kind of go-to baits? And then we'll maybe break into a little bit more specific stuff. Well, basically, <clears throat> this time of the year, um, we always usually have some brown tournaments, at least two for sure, around end of March and one's in April. And when we talk about this, it's kind of a kind of a joke thing, but it made sense at the time, so it sounded good. So when we were we were getting ready for a tournament, and the night before, me and my partners were sitting there and. We had a plan, but my partner decided we needed something to describe what our strategy was going to be the following day. So beer bottles were there at the time, so that's what we use. And the beer bottles describe outlets. And this time of the year, obviously, the water is super, super cold. And basically, your fish this time of the year is going to be far better off fishing near outlets. Um, there's bait fish coming out, the water's, actually right now the water really isn't that much warmer, but it's still just a, a place for the fish to be. There's structure, you got the piers, and a lot of rocks, and the gobies are in the rocks, and that typically is where your browns like to hang out. So when the beer bottles came up, that always marked <laughs> an outlet. <laughs> and Captain Jeff set all the bottles up, and he's like, this is where we need to concentrate. <laughs> Have you guys ever heard of Navionics? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like the Bush Light uh, Navionics version too, but, but oh man, that's the guy we got to get on the we got to get on the show. Yeah, I think so, <laughs> Captain Jeff. <laughs> but yeah, typically um, this time of year, just water's super cold, um, and it's even cold, super cold fishing out there. You got to really, you got to really prepare and dress warm for it. It's almost to the point where it's not really any fun, but it's like the beginning of the year. Yeah. Um, it's like the first fish to be caught, and it's quite challenging. It's it's not go out, I mean, back in the day it was, you could go out and just pretty much put anything in the water and you caught rounds. It's not that way anymore nowadays. It's more of a kind of a hunt and search kind of a deal, and it's, you know, a lot of finesse involved. It's it's totally changed on, um, you know, what you need, really need to do to try to catch these little little rascals because <laughs> they can be hard. So it's but, a, a lot clearer, you know, the water's a lot clearer absolutely. now for sure. And uh, I think that, yeah, y your approach is, uh, you're, you're probably not just taking a regular salmon rod, I would assume, right? right? You know, you're gonna probably downsize. I'm running usually 15 pound and, and then even lighter fluorocarbon leaders, um, usually suffix advanced or suffix Invisalign leader. And, uh, and I have always ran uh, mono for backer and it really has to do with, sometimes it's really cold right. when you do this and braid has a tendency to freeze even braid does not like the cold. it doesn't <laughs> like the cold but some of this new ice braid i think you know you can get away with it a little bit more of the 832 ice stuff and and uh you can get away with that but anyways that's that's what you know we're, we're always doing yeah just and, mono to braid or to and i use like a, a walleye rod a little bit heavier action walleye trolling rod 
Right. Um, and it's really, just, I mean, you can use anything, I think. It's just a little bit more fun because most of right. these fish are three to five pounds. Yeah, they're not very big. They're not big. very big. Yeah, yeah, but we're, we're running the nine foot medium light ugly sticks. Yep. Yeah. Then they've been pretty good when you get a little brown on. Huh? Oh, yeah. But they have enough backbone. You gotta. You always have to be concerned, though, because... It, they have enough backbone, you can you, catch a you king You can catch them. a 20-pound king yeah. doing this, too. And but yeah. they're fun enough that you can catch a brown on them and yeah, still enjoy, have, it. enjoy the fight. And, you know, you're using um, lots of stick baits, um, small hooks, you know, number 10s, number 8s. And it's not... You can't put a ton of pressure on a fish with that mm -hmm. small of a hook in its mouth. Plus, with the browns, they're kind of notorious for spinning and and uh thrashing around and they end up with these hooks all over the place yeah. in their face and and in the side of their head and yeah. it makes them makes it pretty interesting you know uh doug straczynski probably probably one of the the biggest brown fishermen around you know uh with the pole cat and he would always take he always took that front hook right off and you just run these two back ones that's how he always rigged them up i used to always take my front hook off and that came to the point where it's like one more hook is that much better. <laughs> more hooks better. A little more well, Like you were just saying a minute ago, how they get they do get tangled up in it. When you ran the two hooks, you didn't ever really have that a whole lot. It seemed easier. Yeah. But when you lost one, it was always in the back of your mind. What if we would have had, had that other, other hook? hook? Yeah. So I went back to putting all three on. If they uh, get a little twisted up, we'll deal with it. They're a little harder to get out of the net. They are. Yeah. <laughs> They'll twist all them we, right up in there. You know, we've used a rubber net quite a bit, but you can't get a very big hoop size with a rubber net before no. it gets too heavy to use. Right. So, I, you know, any big fish, I'm always netting them with a big, you know, Cummins net anyways. Biggest <laughs> thing I can get around them. Well, you never know either when you're going to hook in. There's, you know, my goal is some days a 20-pound brown that will go on the wall. But yeah. 18 is the best I've done, so I don't have one on the wall yet. I've gotten close a few times, but uh, there's the one guy here that caught a pretty big one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he exceeded 20 pounds yeah. by far. Yeah, Why don't you yeah. talk about that one, Craig? That one we needed a big net for. <laughs> yeah, that was in, in a big boat. Yep, I was running Silver Addiction, and me and Braden and his dad were out on by the project. It was the inside board, and that was in eight foot of water. So that board was yeah, on the beach. Scraping bottom. Yep. Came on a thunder stick, the black and silver mat flash. Dave told me he was catching them all on it, so I put it out there. <laughs> Catches a 30 pounder. <laughs> what did that one end up being? 30.12. Yeah, that's a dandy. And then, you know, I mean, the world record brown at one point was in Manistee River. Right. I'm caught in the fall and during the salmon run, uh, brown's spawn at the same time salmon king salmon spawn so they're briefly in the river they don't hang out in the river and die like the salmon do but um occasionally you'll catch you'll catch them and that was a that was a big fish too oh, that yeah. one we caught was the biggest one after that and the last i knew that was still the biggest one since then yeah so let's talk a little bit about um boats like what kind of boats are you using to do um well, typically in the spring like this, you know, basically most of the time the boat ramps aren't even, the docks are not in. So for you, like, to launch your charter boat, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and so most of the brown fishermen in the early part of the spring like this, most of the guys are in small tin boats. And that's, like, the one tournament that I have. And we haven't had it in the last, I think it's been three or four years now with COVID and yeah. just everything else that seemed like been happening. And, but we're going to try to have it again this year, and we always call it the Tin Cup. And it was basically meant for the brown fisherman that's out there in his little tin boat trying to catch browns. <laughs> and it's, you know, just a thing that's always been there. I mean, some guys, you know, their tin boats are a little fancier than others. <laughs> <laughs> but... There's guys that'll go out and run four rods, yep. and he may do just as well as you do running nine rods or 12 rods, whatever, yep. how many ever can run. Well, I think you have an advantage in a small boat, too, because you can't get inside the second sandbar right. with a big boat. 
I seen a silver what? addiction in pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him there one day too. <laughs> and I asked the captain, I said, How skinny can you get this boat? He said, Well, when the props start hitting, we'll better back, pull her out. I may or may have not, you know, got a little shallow on a couple times in the big boat and see sand coming out the back. And he they was on the boat a couple of times too. <laughs> <laughs> Doug told me a, a story one time where he. He got into where he was so shallow, he had to back out. Yeah, that's shallow. <laughs> that's pretty shallow. Yeah, but I think you have an advantage to get to get up in that that skinnier water. And but you're, you're not drafting as much water. Yeah. And you know, you take the prop on a little 15 horse motor. It's yeah. a little prop compared to and the big props on the just underneath the, yeah, the back of the boat just as well. Under the back and. You'd, it's got a quieter exhaust, you know, the exhausts aren't as loud as the 454s are usually in the bigger boats. So let's talk a little bit about um, about bait bait selection and, and uh, you know, kind of what, what you guys are looking for. Well, it kind of changes throughout the season as, as we are now in February. I've never fished in February, but I'm fishing it now just like I would. Typically we start like in March, it seems mm -hmm. like. It's kind of like, you know, I always just try to be the first one out. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it works, and I'll get down cellar times, and there's already a trailer there. But generally, when you start early like this, for me, it's um, it's all body baits. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, very rarely will you get a spoon bite. I mean, you can run them, and you may pick one up on a spoon. But typically, for the start, it's all stick baits and trolling. For me, it's real slow, 1.8 to 2.0, right in that range. And it seems to work. The slower, the better. And you're running, you know, basically I run all F11 floaters, Rapalas, and it's just a kind of a stealthy little go slow and spread them out. Yeah. And if the water's clear, I go back further. Oh, and, I'll, and I'll lighten up on the leader. I'll go to 12 pound. Typically, I run 15, but yep. I'll go right down to 12 if the water's real clear. And other than that, it's um, as far as the snaps and stuff, um, I try to keep everything very finesse for brown fishing, even on your spoons. Um, you don't want big gaudy swivels like we run in a fall for kings. Yeah. You got to down try to downsize on everything. So these are Dreamweaver, um, you know, the the DS1, which is their smallest that they offer. Yep. And this is about as big of of a swivel that you're going to see in the spring from mm -hmm. me, yep. unless I'm, you know, unless the water starts warming up and I'm going to start getting into some bigger baits. But um, as far as uh, yeah, I'm I'm the same the same kind of way. I run Husky jerks and floaters, a mixture of the two. And uh, but you know like a um, H day twelve, uh, depending where you're fishing, brighter colors and dirtier water, just kind of normal concepts for me, anyways. And I then know, even for you, a twelve is pretty small. I wasn't. Even I know you're notorious for running a fourteen. <laughs> I run fourteens a lot, yeah, and I do run F elevens. It's kind of the 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 go to, but I I run I, I run thirteens. I run thirteens as well. Yeah, and then uh, you know. Guys that fish a little bit outside, will they'll run some countdowns, some CD11s, CD9s. Um, if you're outside the third sandbar, I mean it's you know three or four feet deeper, you can get away with being a little bit deeper. I've found uh, a lot of my bigger fish personally, but I run some bigger baits uh, in the deeper side, and uh, you know I've caught some. Caught most of my uh, bigger fish out. You've taken uh, big brown I, I've many years. It's a tin cup. <laughs> um, but I always had a boat. Well, when we all started the tin cup stuff, I think I still had my 16 footer. But mm -hmm. once I got that sea swirl, I couldn't get in there anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I got to figure this out. Can't go in chill. This bait here, too, the new the scatter apps, they've been out a while now. But when they first came out, this bait will run a little deeper than the F11. And it's got just a pretty erratic action it compared does. to the F11. Yeah. And I typically don't run these a lot right now in the cold, cold water. Yeah. But as the water starts approaching 40, the scatters, they work really, really well. well. But I don't run them back as far as I do the F11s. I'll shorten the leads up a little because they do dive a little deeper. We had some problems with them 
uh, grabbing in the clay mm -hmm. um, when when they first came out, and then we figured out that you know you can just run a thirty foot lead on them, and, right. and you don't need to run eighty foot lead on them, <laughs> and you don't tend to have as many problems. Uh, I see some other uh, some Smithwicks out here as well. Yeah, that's another good. Um, I mean, everybody's got their own preference. Um, but a lot of a lot of it's walleye stuff. Stuff you, you know, is. small bill stuff that you're running for walleyes. The Same only thing I can say is in the in the past years when we first used to start brown fishing, it was typically a lot of oh, your wow, bright wow. bright colors, brighter the better. But now when the gobies seem to got in here and yeah, and since the gobies have arrived, things have changed and. Um, Unfortunately, I forgot my spoons, but <laughs> um, gold and black has probably been our the darker best colors. Color year in and, year and it was a color that you never really thought about running for a brown. Yeah. And it just seems it's like a color that they really seem to like now. And why, I don't know, other than and, the forage has changed. Yeah, if you look at a goby, though, it's not silver. No. You know? No. So, he's, he's pretty brown. He's not real tan. shiny. Yeah, so I'm sure that's a big part of it. Um, as far as planer boards go, uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of options because it's it's really walleye boards that you're using. Uh, you know, the Ninja uh, nine and a half inch board uh, has been good for us uh, for Browns, and then now they have the very small uh, board, uh, the Ninja. The Ninja, I don't even know what they call it. The mini. The seven and a half. Yeah. So. And you know, I think inline boards. Everybody's pretty much using those. Um, a lot of, you know, a board where you, you can release the front can be helpful uh, for brown fishing for sure. These uh, are like the beginning stages of the ninja. Yeah, that's that was, that was the first first run, first run of them. And then I don't even know if they ever sold those. Yeah. Did they? Yeah. A little while. We used to have them all the time at the store. So uh, you know, they used to have the yucks that were the old true tracks. I don't even know if you can get those anymore. I don't uh, believe the old so. Big Johns with the, I think they're obsolete. Remember the Big Johns with the rattles on the inside? Yeah. And then yeah. you could flip the other ones from left to right. Left to right. That yeah. was the Willie board. The Willie board. <laughs> that was George. Brian Buller just lost one the other day and he was trying his best to get it back. <laughs> Said he passed it twice and couldn't get it. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to get out there, you're looking for usually a little like more stained water. Um, I don't like to fish water that's chalky, necessarily. You know that that like clay clay water, um, but stained water is usually a little bit warmer. And, and I don't like the clear water. Yeah, and the if clear I water. Can get into dirty water. Yeah. I'm going there. So you know, and then if you're anywhere, any drowned river mouth, any drowned creek mouth. Sometimes the creek mouths are better earlier, mm -hmm. I think, because they don't. They, the the runoff's probably not, isn't as much ice, you know, in the runoff, so it gets warmer faster. Um, you know, your dirtier little rivers like the Lincoln or, or um, you know, if you're even like in Whitehall and, I mean, all through the whole stretch, you can fish pretty much from Grand Haven to Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's there's fish all through that, that whole stretch. And then, I mean, if you're, if you really want to go after some trophy browns, um, venture crossed and yeah that's pretty we need to do that we need to do that <laughs> we do if we do it we'll make a video we should Absolutely. just play it well and the other thing with the spoons a lot of people don't think that we control them at one eight yeah but we've proven year after year after year that I don't know if they're just down dragging in the dirt and they look like a goby or a sculpin in the sand yeah but they produce year after year at that slow speeds and yeah, for sure. The SS is, um, you know, that's from Dreamweaver. Um, I used to fish the LDs. Me too. Little a doubles. lot. I fished them. That yeah, was what I grew I, up. Fishing. I just got away from it, and I don't, I don't know why. Right. They probably they worked still great. Work. Yeah. The old Yak 22s. <laughs> yep. The old Yak 22, the small, um, the 55 is. I mean, that's a go-to spoon for me always. Yeah. Um, that's been a great spoon, and then and these spoons will. We'll troll way down there. Yeah. You know, this is the um, the scorpion from Stinger, and then there's there's a few others that are similar size. To that scorpion spoon and we usually all when, it's, work. when it's cold like it is right now, the body baits, body are, baits are better. Better, but we always have a couple spoons out to keep them honest. Yeah. And then when the spoons start producing more than the body baits, 
we'll always leave one or two body baits out there just to keep the fish on us. Yep. I always as oh. the year goes on, the body baits will get eliminated. Yeah, slow but sure. But it really, anytime if there's browns around and you have a body bait out on a one mm -hmm. color or a two color, there's it's, a good chance it's, it's going to take take a bite. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, so I hope uh, you know you guys get your boats out and and uh, make sure if you do get your boats out, a few things to remember if you're not if you're going back into cold storage is. Put the um, motor down and drain it. Yeah, get the motor down, get all the water out of it, drain it best that you can. And then what I used to do is just take a vacuum shop vac and every through hole fitting on my boat, I just ran the vac and stuck, stuck it on there until it started sucking air. And I did all of them. Um, the only, you know, bilge pumps definitely want to get your plugs out, want to make sure all your water's out. And uh, if you have a live well, yeah, make sure they're drained. Make sure they're drained and make sure that pump's <laughs> as good drained as you can. That's uh, always a concern, you know. But the water's cold and you're close to shore. Dress warm. Make sure you have all your safety gear. Bring extra hand warmers. Hand yeah, warmers. hand warmers for sure. That's a must. Body heater. I mean, <laughs> basically all your ice fishing stuff, just move <laughs> yeah. it into your aluminum boat and away you go. I was out this morning, though. Once the sun came up, it got pretty nice out there. <laughs> it, was, I, it was actually warm. <laughs> yesterday, or m Monday morning, I was in Saginaw Bay yeah. there in, in the river. And uh, <clears throat> when we got pulled into the parking lot, it was 14. Wow. And the river snapped froze. And, but by like 9 o'clock, it was pretty nice out. It wasn't too bad. And that's another thing with brown fishing is... <laughs> You don't have to go first thing. I, some of yeah. my best days have been between Middle two of the day. and three. Yeah. Well, our first outing this year, we fished and had a phenomenal day. So we thought, well, let's do it again tomorrow. We went to do it again the next day, and the whole shoreline was skim ice, <laughs> high quarter inch. <laughs> yeah. So we did not get to fish where we got them the day before. Yeah, I've uh, I've been on a couple boats where you you know, even out on Lake Michigan where you run into like skim ice that. It snap froze. You wouldn't think like Michigan snap froze, but if it's if it's no wind at night and cold temperatures, it, there's going to be ice. Yeah, there's yeah. times you'd be running down and it had a funny sound to it. Yeah. It kind of <laughs> shut down for a minute, and you look, and it's all skim ice around you. Yeah, here's a here's a clip. I'll I'll put a little. Uh, <laughs> it's a 31 tier. I'm making its way through the ice. So you got to be careful. You got to pick your days. You got to watch the weather. Um, you know, definitely. Uh, Leave, leave keys for your truck somewhere so that <laughs> people can pick you up in the next port. Only done that a couple of times. Right. But it is very enjoyable. It is very enjoyable. And and some of the best table fare, the, those small browns are delicious to eat. That's the thing that most people with these little browns that we're catching right now is they just, they are delicious. Oh, man, they're good. <laughs> they are. And we've been getting some cohos. I don't know if. Yeah, I probably caught a dozen so far. This you know, spring. some of them are undersized. Is it are spring? Undersized. It's not spring, is well, it? it's <laughs> Wait, is this winter. winter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. Winter fishing. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. I hope you uh, got some info on brown fishing. Uh, big shout out to Captain Chucks uh, for all their support. And then also uh, the Wolf's Den for this beautiful table and chairs that we're sitting in. Thank you, guys. Uh, make sure you stop in there. That's in Scottville, Michigan. They have everything that your wife will want to buy for the cabin in one spot. <laughs> and your dining room. <laughs> and your dining room. Yeah. So, all right. We hope to see you guys again soon.